Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 51 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up in the winter season of 211 in turn 108. And this is the final countdown as we are going to declare war possibly next turn on Dong Min and we'll either beat him down enough so that he will abdicate or just march our armies right into their capital. Both are pretty straightforward and simple methods. Um, let's see, we are at a new turn. Uh, we did do some fighting. We got our ruined officer killed. Yang Xiu popped in here to take care of that. Liu Bei has the full force now, but we are looking for Guan Yu pretty actively. Um, so let's see which armies have not moved and we'll start from there. So northern armies are still on standby. We could declare war on Dong Zhuo this turn, but the issue is Lu Bu's army is kind of out of reach right now. Do they have siege weapons? They don't. But maybe we just declare war. Hmm, we'll think about it. First we'll fight this battle in the north. We'll take Shuo Fang. Seems like Defender has escaped, knowing that they can't beat us. It's a Pyrrhic victory with a delegate. They do have a horseback huntsman. They get a bunch of units from different rosters. This is from Yellow Turbans. Mm, not impressed. We'll delegate. And we caught him, but he's not willing to work for us. I guess we kill him. I don't really mind relationships with the factions now at this point, and I think releasing too many of our enemies might upset some of our vassals and subjects. So we're gonna kill them. Alright, we already have reach and flexibility, so we don't need to rush over here. We might as well continue... Hmm. Yeah, we'll do this. Fatigue resistant for own retinue, not bad. Let's see how they build it. We'll build it real quick. Um, we already have a building here. They build it pretty well. The only thing I would change is probably change this to a state workshop. So I guess we can demolish this turn. And the rest is pretty fine. We probably have to convert this, but that's not a big deal. Alright, this army is actively going to seek death by fighting Liu Bell's men. Now, how to reach them is going to be interesting because there's a lot of rivers here. So we'll come here. Also's army is in place. I don't think they'll threaten anything. So this war we can get started right away. Yeah, we're definitely in the end game now. Gonna clean up all these small groups that we left behind. And this is no issue either. And then this army will try to speed up north to try to participate in the final battle in Chan if that's necessary. They picked up an Anzuri item post battle. These are random events. Family spear. No big deal. We also got a title. That's from an earlier battle where we had so many archers. Alright, Maohu picked up a win. Give ourselves extra 5% replenishment. Might make a difference on them. Mm, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Maybe it's just the rice patties. You can see the plus 50% from rice patties down south right now. So we have regular replenishment on these Imperial units. And that's beautiful sight to see. And there's no such thing as trespassing now. Wonder what they're going to do. They're kind of in a very bad, isolated region. We're going to throw this at them. I don't care who wins between the two. Alright, Dobe's army is fully healed, ready to move. Probably want him to lead. Huang Zhu will give us more movement in the future. And I probably don't need to come here. We'll probably switch to March. Zhou Tai's force can take care of everything over there. Alright, we'll keep going south as it requires. What happened to the army that was here? Did we wipe them? 
I thought, well, maybe we, yeah, maybe we wiped them. We chased, I think, yeah. We wiped them so they could possibly pull out Guan Yu. But right now we don't see Guan Yu on the map. I'm gonna take this. Once again, no resistance, no night battle, a little sad. Oh, we got a new spear. We can give Huang Gai a decent weapon. I wouldn't call it decent, but it's better than what he has. Cao Xing, ranked up. So, I guess 10% armor for all spear units. Fine thing to get. I'll pick up this. Although, hold on. This is more important for corruption reduction. The rest of the buildings are perfectly fine because we build it. We just capture that one. So no big deal there. Uh, we're going to peek to see if Guan Yu is here. If not, I might just let Wu Tu Gu finish them off. If they can get through Meng Huo. If not, I guess we'll finish them off. It's fine. Um, we're not getting any spies from them. Nor are we getting any spies that's useful. We picked him up, but now I'm like, what are we going to do with him? Nothing really. I can recall him. Just extract him. Grab another general. He seems to have items. Maybe. Kind of looks like this is not... This might be a bronze armor. I think we'll just continue to have these two boost relationship. Simply because they are family members. So Shixie will really never bother us. Look at that. Going trending towards 111. When we started, we're negative 65. Alright, the faction leader herself can do exactly the same thing, but we don't have enough points, so no rush there. We might actually have to fight them later, but they're also quite weak. Alright, so that's no big deal. Yeah, armies in the north are getting a little bit antsy, doing nothing all this time. I think we can declare war. Oh, Sima Yi's army. They healed. Alright, so... Honestly, the more powerful factions are down south than the Nanman factions. So, we're gonna still move our main forces down. Cao Cao is just going there to, you know, crown himself the emperor when that time comes. Rebel farming next turn, I believe. Yep. That's perfect. Okay, I think we will start the war, but first let's get all the buildings done. We only own like half the map, maybe even more than half. So lots of building to look at. I mean, we're at 18 armies. A few that are just empty, but very few. Most of them is full stack with Imperial units. And we're still positive 59k gold or copper per turn. Very efficient economy. Um, we just picked up Xiaoyang. It's built terribly. Oh my god. Yeah. We're gonna have to get rid of both of these. We have two builds, so we get rid of two. We're gonna downgrade this. State Workshop. Same thing, and what else is missing? Uh, we can go with just food build. We're not very greedy about income here. All right, and then we have one open assignment, which we will probably put in the most lucrative city. It's probably the industrial exploitation. Yep, Lady Bent, doing assignment her whole life. Our faithful wife. Alright, we're gonna look at the espionage. We're gonna take a quick look at Quick Deal and then officially declare a war through here as well. 
Queen Jurong had enough, uh, but we are not done with them. Military access. Actually, we can do this. Who is he a vassal of? That's my question. Oh, it's a separatist relationship, I think. Uh, oh no, actually, we just saw who he's, uh, he's a vassal of Dongmin. Yeah, we'll support that. Han Sui is a little bit of an issue, because he joins in the war at Wu Tugu. Hmm. Wu Tugu is also an issue. Maybe we won't go to war this turn. Yeah, I think our armies are kind of not in position for Wu Tugu, because he could just pour out over here. We might as well free these two up once we finish them off. One can go fight Meng Huo, one can go reinforce Tang Wu, and then we'll meet up in Wu Ling. They're going to continue to sweep through this area. Now, when are we going to see a rebel force here? Hmm, not anytime soon, despite this. To trigger a rebellion here, we probably need to get a reform. Not what I want to do. So maybe we can't test out Naman rebellions. Yep, unfortunate. Um, yeah, we're not going to take the risk. We're not going to start the war this turn. Wutugu has a lot of land. We'll do it next turn. Alright, we'll do it next turn. Let's continue then. Alright, Lady Jurong had enough. But we haven't had enough, so nope. Oh, they're also at war with Old Tingping. <laughs> Picking on Obiao when he has no land. Alright, no new characters, so I don't know what happened to Yuan Shu and them. We'll continue to chase. They went across one river, but that means they have to go through another river. They're kind of trapped between two, you know, just bend in this river. We'll see where they go. Alsa's army can't take a break either. We have to. I think we'll just meet up at Wu Pass. Over here, State Workshop is a must. And we'll probably take. Hmm. We don't have to reform for the Tier 2 Forge, which is really a shame. So this third building could be anything, really. Nothing really fits here. I guess if we want more money, it'd be private workshop. And we probably want to get rid of this as well and go in. And then this probably goes away from marketplace. Because I don't see why we need to plant food here. Okay, we gotta knock down a few rebellions. This has formed. Doesn't matter, no item. Yeah, immediately we have to recall this army, because this is our only army fighting rebellions. And we're just going to have to rotate them around. That way they can keep leveling up. Sun so Ren here can pick up Breach. And Lady Wu here can pick up, I guess, Mighty Knockback for herself. And then this whole army will be recalled. We'll redeploy them with a proxy next turn in... Changsha or Dong, both are fine. The one that doesn't get them will just wait another turn before getting them. No big deal. Yeah, the North is ready to go to war. They're raiding. Bad idea, my friend. Yeah, nobody famous, no one I want. Get rid of them. We're not disloyal. Uh, we'll release. You don't have items. You didn't have the unique horse unit. The strategist had that. Can we squeeze back? Yeah, so that we get the replenishment. And then we'll come pick this up. That's her capital. She's done. After we get the horse tamer, which will spawn horses. Like the ancillary item horses. 
Um, after we pick this up, I think we finish them off. And this army can kind of take care of potential attacks from Han Sui. And then we can feel pretty good about starting this war because I think they're going to jump in. We're going to hit them before we hit Lu Bu's army, which is coming down here. So it's kind of far away from where he can hit us. I think it's going well. We're going to declare the war this turn. But first, let's take care of all the southern issues because there are a ton of them. We have a full stack in the river. We have a small group on top. We'll kill the small group. That's kind of our job. Don't tell me we can't reach them. We can't reach them. I don't know how the delegate value will work, but I think we got them. They have the fire up bonus. The unit looks pretty good. If we can't beat them with the delegate, that's when things get awkward. Because then we can't back out of it. So maybe the best option is not to fight them in the river and just land. And we'll take the rest of the journey on foot. Not the most efficient route, but probably the safest thing to do. They don't even have any more armies here. They have this, they have this. They have more land because they probably have more land back home. There we go. Because I don't see the capital star anywhere. Alright, we might as well leave this to Zhou Tai's army and we go south instead. Yeah, I think this is probably more efficient for us. The Zhou Tai can swing down this valley, pick up Fu Ling, and then follow them. They can split. They will continue to... I guess attack Wu Tugu, because Wu Tugu is going to declare war on us. And then both of these army can join in the fight over here. They will push down in here. They will push out over here. So they will first just get back on the main road from the mountains. We're going to take this road. Next turn. Long marches into Basi and Shu. Alright, most of these armies are good. There's still a few more, but we'll get to it. Mainly Huang Gai. That's the one I'm most interested in seeing. Because, you know, where is Guan Yu? Level up. Alright. Bravery into Tenacity of Steel. Nope. Not the one I'm looking for. This one. Uh, can't reach, but maybe we get vision. If not, we'll just march. Oh! He's here. He's actually here. Go bet, where are you? Uh, they're on march. I can't I can't recall him because he's on march Alright, we'll hold off on attacking them then If they come attack us we retreat they won't have enough movement to chase Alright, Shi Xie will never rebel With the rate we are using our spy actions. So we're gonna put this army in the port sell them up block out Mulu and then meet up over here to start getting ready to defend Changwu and expanding out this way. Meanwhile, we'll just back off a little, probably go to port and sail away. We'll summon Liu Bei here and uh, they can meet up with Guan Yu in a turn or two. That might be our final battle. That would be hilarious. We'll get the two brothers to uh, face off with each other. Right, they're in the perfect spot. The rest of the army are the war with Domin. So we're going to get them ready as well. We have probably one more reform to take before the game end. I think it's about time to pick up this forge building so we can start getting items. But we really don't need it aside from that. Level 4 Twin Tian would have been helpful too, but... Also, eventually level 5 Rice Patties. Tax collection buildings to spawn some rebels. Corruption reduction, these are all useful reforms. Uh, getting tier 5 in, that's a viable option. Then eventually moving up here for a tier 5 marketplace. Also salt mine, I believe. Yeah, salt mine. And jade. 
pretty much a lot of building reforms uh, that's left. You can also pick up a few more spies. And I think you can get administrators if you continue down this way. There should be one more administrators that you can unlock. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty far, but it's worth it. Uh, you need some military reform too. Uh, it's on the path towards the Yellow Dragon, which we're actually not that far off. It's one of the hardest reform to get in the game, and it's required for you know your Imperial Palace. Uh, but at the point where we are at, you know the gold, the coin minting, uh, it's very important. And this is the public order bonus and also character salary discount. This will actually boost our economy by so much because we have like 80, 90 characters. So if we shave 20%, which is at least 30, I think base salary is 150. So 20% is at least 30 off each. That's like 2,000 saving per turn right there. Um, but I think what will immediately give us benefits is probably this one. This one's probably a close second just for the forge effect to get a bunch of silver items, bronze and silver items. I think I'm going to go here because we just have more existing market places, especially in... You know, very lucrative commanderies like Danyang that's been waiting for these reforms. Pop this up, pop this up. That's two buildings in somewhere that's going to pay us out the most. Uh, same thing in Changsha. And can we get a... Oh, we do have a commerce boost. That's good enough. Don't need some sort of industry boost. Do we have any more industry boost? Oh, we have one right here. Lady Me, why don't you keep leveling up and then we'll also pump this up why not why not it's good we don't really need to boost anything other than peasantry here not I could use some commerce port plus trade port that's very lucrative yeah we'll just use you it doesn't really matter no administrator here so there's no clash of personalities the problem with that reform that we picked up is it's only going to be able to be used in small regional cities. That's one of the requirements for this building. Uh, but we do have a lot of salt mines, so those will get the upgrade. Let's get these out of the way before we declare war on the last standing kingdom and really move into our end game here. Huh. Nothing needs to be built. Yeah, there we go. We have over 100k. We're going to rush again. Beautiful. This is where it's hung. Okay. Uh, we'll keep it city build. Same thing here. Corruption reduction. Very vital. Going to be a lumber yard here. So I'm guessing we just plant some food. Alright. I guess it's wartime. Oh, Lady Jerome don't want peace anymore. Hello, my friend. We can even declare empire war. This is new. So if you are part of alliance or part of an empire, you can do empire war or alliance war, where you call all members of an empire to do a joint war. In this case, it'd be Gongdu, which is totally fine because Gongdu is pouring armies all over the place. Um, so I think that's actually what we're going to do. Empire war against alliance. And I'm assuming his alliance is Zhengjiang, who we're already at war with. Let's see who likes what. Oh, Tingping likes this. Liu Biao likes this. Doesn't matter, they're wiped. Zhuo so Zhu Lan, our spy, likes this. Zhengjiang hates this, because we're really going to war with them. We're going to drop 162 points with Kingdom of Zhou, 92 with Han Sui, their vassal. 
Yan Xiang is their vassal, Wu Tugu is their vassal. Still positive with Wu Tugu, so we'll see. Luo Jun, okay. No. Oh, right, because we have... We have deals with them. It's too, it's late game. Who's going to judge us on being treacherous? You know, rather betray the world than have the world betray us. So, let's take a look at where we stand diplomatically. So the color is going to be a little strange. Yellow is Empire members, so that's why he's yellow. Pink is like alliance, so we're kind of in alliance war, so we see the whole alliance as one color. So Zhengjiang and Kingdom of Zhou is one color. And then the vassals have declared war on us, so they're enemy color. Wu Tugu and Queen Zhu Rong, who we've been fighting. Meng Huo, we've been fighting. Ou Tingping, we've been fighting. And then we have our vassals in the light green. I'm actually more curious about attitude. So Gong Sun Xu probably need us to be paying them a little bit. We can also ask them to help us in the war. Okay, and because this is alliance war, we can't peace out with individual members. We have to either peace out with the whole alliance or whatnot. Here. 5,000 is close. Oh, there we go. Take it. We're a very generous lord. You show a little inkling of not liking us, we give you money. Alright. Hong has been waiting forever. Chung. The bandit character, I think. Alright, Hlene captured. Hlene is where Sima Yi's clan's from. Wow, it's built really well. Oh, it's built really, really well. Okay, applaud them. They even have the corruption reduction there. They just oversized. You can go down to city and we're fine here. We'll take some of these passes. Or actually, the pass is pretty neutral. We might as well wipe out Yan Xiang's faction now. Our spy can be extracted. So he doesn't join the fight, he doesn't turn on them, but he, he will leave the fight. He will abandon his... Oh, Toshang? We've been fighting him forever. Um, but we don't need to see him in another fight. We've seen him so many times when fighting Tao Ying's faction. And Tao Tian's faction before that. That was our first challenge in the story mode in the early game. And Yan Xiang should be wiped. And this separatist movement should be over. Okay, this is an example of a terrible build. Where like everything needs to get removed. Maybe except this one. This one we can keep. It has one million pop, so we can probably build two things next turn. We'll keep this for now. We'll switch it over later. I'm probably not going to go Garrison, because we don't need it. Garrisons produce less food, but provides extra bonuses. Alright, working our way towards Night Battle. You can pick up a blade. You can pick up a good blade. We have so many blades. Over here, we will take Hangu Guan. Been waiting for this moment for a long time. And then after the level up, level 7, Xun Yu. Nice. Uh, we can get 25% extra range damage. That helps a lot for Onyx Dragons, which is heavily range damage. We're going to upgrade Han Gu Guan, and then we're going to swing towards Tong Guan. Meanwhile, yeah, we're just going to meet up a Wu Guan and then Cao Cao and Dian Wei's army. Xia Hou Yuan, Xun Yu, random champion Guo Jia will meet up at Chang'an. And that will be the game, as Gong Du's army are flooding over as well. We have him on the way, so the idea here is Ma Teng will catch Han Zui's army both in the range of our city garrison and with them on march and very injured. So this is a great opportunity to wipe them out. Anyone significant here? Not even any Hansui family members? Sad. 
乱军终于得以平息。Uh, we'll release. Do fang la ba. We'll also release. Bai gun hui qu ba. Na qi wu qi. Sorry for the no item setup. We was coming up, so maybe get some capture chance on yourself. Everyone can default to a stone pig. Not a bad item. Here. Huh, he has a resolve horse. That's actually pretty interesting. Matching red horses. And we can chase them down. Get official wipe. And Yuvu's army is next. Now we probably want to stay within the city limits. We can even ambush so we get the full replenishment. They're kind of in an awkward situation. They're clearly trying to go back to their own territory, which they can, but they can only do that when on March, so they still won't be able to heal. And we kind of have Dongmin cornered here in uh, Jingzhou, which is the commandery name of the capital, which is the city of Chang'an here. It's Dongzhuo's capital. He moved it. And these armies can now actually extend their movement into the territory. Well, he actually can't even get into the territory, which is fine because he needs healing. We'll keep moving down this way. They have all moved. We should have one army left, right? Taiyuan. Yeah, we had everything planned. This is Sahodun, Zhang He, Ju Shuo. Rank 2? Alright, Flaming Shot on Trebuchet. Very, very nice. Um, they will turn south. They will continue down here before bouncing back to Hedong. They're gonna go through Qi Pass to the rest of Hedong. Dianwei's army will move through Tong Pass like we mentioned. And the army should be perfectly fine. We have an empty slot. Let's hope for a good one. Zheng uh, Jiang. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass on Zheng Jiang's recruit. Keep going. Keep pushing that number up. Because some of them will time out. You stay loyal too. Tell yourself to stay loyal. Alright, didn't pick up anyone interesting. Oh, actually, I could see who Zheng Jiang has. That's actually a, a good use of him right here. Oh, absolutely no one interesting, and there is no army being recruited on the field. Oh, they're done. They have one territory and they're not recruiting any armies? Then then they're done. Alright, he will return to us once we wipe out the faction, so we don't really need to worry about him. I think we did all the buildings already. And there's really no diplomacy left. There, there is really no diplomacy left. We're at war with the world. Except for, you know... Certain factions that we kept really happy on our side, but that's about it. And if we really want to maximize money, we create a couple more vassals, but no need to do that. We can just continue here. Oh, Queen Zhu Rong. Double teamed. The army in the river bumped up, and the army that was being chased popped out. I'm going to retreat once. I think they can chase us? Yeah, but can they chase us together? They can, but now they're facing us in the same direction. Previously, this guy was behind us. 
So this is a more intense battle for us because if we lose this battle, it's a wipe because we retreat at once. Okay, we are on the open field, river, some forest. Okay, we can deal with this. We have strong generals. Check. No item. Terrible. Some item. Okay. Not the greatest situation, but let's tough it out. All right, beautiful day. Finally, it's not raining when we need a fire. Um, they're coming from pretty far away. We can drag them into... I don't know, do I really want them in the forest, though? Naman forces do get bonuses in the forest. Or at least they don't get penalties. But... Fire is still good. Assuming we have... Uh, scratch that, scratch that. Never said anything about fire. We're going to stick to the open field. Uh, before the terrain drops off the elevation. I think it slopes down. So we'll do something like this. I might... Hmm. I'm debating whether I want to micro those units or not. I'm going to stack them this way. It's a little bit unconventional. And then we have a super, super sturdy front line. Shield walled. Imperial gate guards. And then we have... We might as well use formations. We don't need range block chance on these because no one's going to shoot them because they're on the flank. Alright, this army's looking sharp. And then cavalry is interesting. I think cavalry we want to split to two groups. Guarding each flank in kind of a reserve counter charge position. I forgot if they have anything cavalry related. They might. I'm gonna place them. Just cast them wide. Hmm. So reinforcement coming from this side. I'm going to put the tower right here. To catch them as they move forward. And then we can start some artificial fires here. Turn off all dueling. Do we have Oathorn? We don't. So we're not at our full power yet. We only have friends. Zhou Tai's specialty is that if he has an Oathorn in his group. Or on the battlefield. It doesn't even have to be in his group. If it's in the reinforcement army, it's fine too. You can activate this ability at that point, and it becomes deactivated if your Oathorn dies. And once it's activated, you see here, you lose all melee evasion, which doesn't matter. You only have 18% anyways, so it's not a big deal. It goes to zero. You never gain fatigue again. You become immune to fatigue. You're unbreakable. And most importantly, you heal 750 every 10 seconds, which is actually massive. It's a massive heal. And constant and forever... And you never die. It's literally undying Val. And you can solo thousands and thousands of enemies by yourself. Which is ridiculous, but that's what it is. So what I think is the enemy have, you know, placed their men over there and they're gonna group up and I'm gonna hold on, that doesn't work because when I do the alt stuff, the formations get broken up because they're immobile formations. So I think what we have to do is control four, we have to lock group, and then now we can kind of place them exactly the same and adjust. I don't know when they're gonna show up, but they will. We can scout. Oh, almost hit our own wooden I, I was going to send him not on this side, but... Where are they? Hello? It's not even foggy. They're just far. Ah, they're coming. They're coming. They have cavalry. Those mercenary cavalry. I will stand here... How do we like our formation? Do we need to tilt any more? Mm, I don't like how some of them are sagging off. 
I guess we'll move them somewhat. This side. They better be keep on moving. How do we not see them? Okay. He wants a duel. Can we beat him? That's not that strong. That's also not that strong. Hold on. I'm, I want him to challenge me. Will he? What is that? Javelin throwers? No, he's not going to pick up the challenge. So... Poison units. Our tower is going to work. We can take them out first. Oh, our tribuches are active. So they're in range. We can start fighting this like a regular battle. Although I can probably stop them from shooting for now because there's no high value target. All these we can kill with Jotai himself. So now imagine him immune to fatigue, being unbreakable, being able to do all this, and never getting tired, and constantly healing. It's ridiculous. I'll wait till more of the infantry, which they don't actually have a lot of. They have a lot of really bad range units. I don't even want to waste ammo right now. Fire arrow needs to die. That's definitely true. Alright, there's some axe units on the map. Let's see where the auto fire directs them. Apparently, hidden vipers are not so hidden here. They're no longer firing? There we go. I was like, where's the next shot? Yeah, they're just wasting shots. I should probably control them. I don't understand why the fire arrow is not trying to hit our tower. Seriously wasting ammo. Javelin spear guards, actually a strong unit. Nanjong spearmen, not really. Cavalry going to that flank. Here, you take this one, you take this one. Where's the other fire archer? I will go through them. Seems like cavalry is going to be on this side. I think those were some hidden vipers that made it through. And they're about to charge us. <laughs> Oh, the archer is getting... Okay, so we got a taker, but I don't want to do it right now. Where's the fire archer? No, let me decline all of them. There they are. Archer is gone. They died. They couldn't make it past our Onyx Dragons. Alright, 
Okay. They have some annoying follower of the flame. I might have to get them to focus fire on those guys. Here, go light the flame. We will not let these boys get up to our line. Oh? Hello? Oh, no, no, no. Oh yeah, they're, they're fine, they can disengage. I want this group to start flying at whoever you want and pull back because they went forward to chase. And they're done, so they can move back. She lit the fire, time to back off. We're gonna send them over here, Joseph I killed that one. There's really no need to flank protect, charge. Alright, sweep across. Sweep across. We're gonna kill ourselves on the wooden stakes though. Okay, let the Imperial units do their own business. Like, why are we worried about this front line? This front line is as solid as things can get. Take care of them. Take care of them. Uh, we'll move him away. Here, if you're behind our lines, then we'll kill you with our cavalry. Uh, actually, let's charge this group. Never mind, they're not braced. Alright, do some quick work here. Actually, just stick on the generals. They're done. They are officially done. Alrighty. That's a great casualty ratio. And we caught some generals that we are going to execute. She's actually willing to work for us, but no elephants means we're not interested. Same thing here. Oh, Liu Han. I have no idea whose kid he is. We'll take discipline. Wu okay, Wu Jing. Wu Tu. Okay, Wu Jing is Lady Wu's brother, and we can welcome him into our collection for no particular reason. Uh, Guo Tu, also the roster of former Yuan Shao. Oh, actually, he never got to work for Yuan Shao in this alternate universe. Um, he's not a spy, he has a semi-unique background, not super unique, so instead of 15 points, he's 20 points, it's not like 30 points. Uh, but it's actually pretty interesting, faction-wide campaign movement range is pretty strong, but bad at avoiding ambushes. Uh, we'll grab him, I, I don't think we'll be utilizing any of them, just grabbing them for no reason. Alright, so Lu Bu's army is gone, I think he ran back, we can pop out now. And we don't have to actually go to Chang'an. That's not our job. Our job is to make sure the land that we have in the north isn't taken. 
So I think we actually can fight Zhengjiang. Maybe this will be our last battle here. Let's wipe out Zhengjiang in the north. Give her a proper send-off. One bandit character to another. Zanba to Zhengjiang. Night battle. She is full healed. She has her items. Yep, she has her gold. The Red Sisters. Very strong weapon because it gives fatigue immunity. One of the very few weapons that does this. And it's very, very valuable to get. Um, so let it fight this one on the battlefield. Give her the proper send off. Do we have anyone that can actually fight her? Sound about maybe. I mean, no armor, silver versus gold. Probably not. Maybe if we shoot her a couple times first. She also has a dagger throwing ability. I don't know if she actually has that right now active. Nope, she doesn't. She has tenacity to. Oh, she's impossible to fight in a duel. There's no way we can beat her. Maybe we just won't duel her then. So let's start battle. All right, so we're fighting in the Northwest, which has some awesome terrains in the game. It's really flat, but you get mountains like this or little jagged rocks like this. Uh, what are we gonna do in terms of the actual fight though? It's not a very exciting fight. They don't have a very big army. It's mainly about the generals, but I also don't feel confident dueling her. So that's where things get a little bit awkward. Like, we're probably going to run her down with this. But maybe, maybe we'll get a shot. Let's see if we can snipe her a couple times. We'll back off a little first, and then we'll duel her after we finish off our arrows. How many ammo? We have 24. Wow, there's so many. High cunning is really good. But the damage is not going to be super high. I mean, still, if we hit... Oh, she has so much health. Alright, it's about 1k per arrow. 1.7k? We're hitting everything? No, there, there's armor. 55% armor. It's about 1.1, 1.2k. And we're missing a bunch of shots. Oh, he's trying to shoot back with his bronze bow. Alright, let's see how much we can wound her first. Before we send someone out to duel. I'm not even going to micro any of these. They can do their own thing. Alright, we shaved off a third of her health. We still have a few ammo, but we're about to route because we're taking shots as well. Uh, now she doesn't want to duel. Alright, get back, get back, get back. Wait, well, actually, we just back off a little. Hold on. He's much weaker now. Alright, we'll say yes to that, but I'm going to be the one challenging him. Tenacity of Steel with Silver Weapon? It's not a guaranteed win. I'd rather fight Zhengjiang. Uh, yeah, this health, yeah, I would rather fight Zhengjiang. He has stock, he's hiding. Here. You two, take care of that. We're gonna use mending right away. Uh, friendly fire, friendly fire. Charge through, can we? Okay, charge through. They might be in trouble. A lot of friendly fire and then also a lot of getting shot. Come on, pull out, pull out. Oh, we lost one. It's okay. Our archer routed really fast there. We'll let the range take care of that. Alright, Zheng Zhang's end is going to be a bunch of cavalry charging at her. And her health is just going to evaporate from the charge. It was like 11k. Now it's 6.2. He's going to lose. 
Alright, run away. <laughs> Jiang's almost done. Oh, you know what? We charge the innocent guy. We do this hidden strike on Zheng Jiang. This is a strategist with offensive ability here. It does a lot of damage. If we hit her, she dies. It's over 10 seconds, so we can just get out now. Get out, get out. Dash you with a sneak attack. Alright, that's fair. Alrighty. That's a fitting end for Zheng Jiang. Stab in the back by the man with the tall hat. And I don't care. Oh, Hidden Axes is a nice unit, actually. And we get three items, so we will employ. Zheng Jiang is now destroyed. Our spy is returning, which means we should have an empty spy spot. Oh, Dong Zhuo's faction. A couple of spies from our own vassals. Um, we might pick this up, but we're going to do that in next episode. Next episode will be our final one. Uh, we are pretty much over uh, with this one. We have our armies all in the place. It'll probably take about two turns to sweep through all of North, maybe three for the last piece here. The Anway should be able to tackle some of these in two turns as well. Um, probably take them two turns if we start marching now to get to Wu Pass. Uh, we probably stop doing all the building stuff. That wastes quite a bit of time as we don't need money at this point, especially with victory in sight. Uh, we're going to continue to push down south. Liu Bei is going to get recalled at the beginning of the next episode. We'll summon him over here. They will divert themselves to fight the Nanmans in the north. And we'll have Liu Bei fight Guan Yu as probably the final battle in tomorrow's final episode. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. And we'll see you all next time. Bye!